All right, guys. Today I want to talk about how you can completely just demolish things with Rhino. Uh, Brandon had made a video a couple days ago uh, demonstrating these things, and uh, I felt like uh, kind of obligated to um, to beat him at his own game. So he made a real stupid, crazy sound, and I decided that I'm going to make a sound that's even crazier and more stupid. So let me just go ahead and... Uh, I'll play just the drum sound that I came up with. And you can see here, this is all my drums. And I've got Rhino on everything with the exception for the, the drum bus. I've just got a kick, a snare, and a hi-hat. And I've radically transformed them with Rhino. I'm using a couple inserts too, but uh, Rhino is doing the, the bulk of the work here. And I've also got a synth thing that I'm going to bring in a little bit later. But this is just the drums, so let's take a listen. <laughs> Okay, so pretty pretty freaking ridiculous. Um, I want to start out with I'll start out with the snare. Um, it's probably the, the wildest sound going on here, and I'm going to go ahead and I'll disengage the compressor and the reverb I had. And you can see here I've got an automation track going, and basically what I'm doing it's uh, really really simple. I'm just um, I'm automating the oomph frequency. So if I play this. Uh, keep your eye on this guy right here. You'll see this is just going up and down real crazy, and it's creating those uh, those really weird sounds. So let's listen to just a snare. Okay, who, who doesn't want to be able to do that? I mean, come on. So uh, this is what I have without it. God, that's just so boring and stupid. All right, now after Rhino, what I did is I uh, I brought in a compressor, and I'm basically just trying to remove as much attack as I possibly can. So this is with the compressor and Rhino. <laughs> Okay, so that's uh, letting more of that uh, that tone in the actual pitches and not just the, the transient. And then I put the reverb on there, um, a pretty pretty uh, uh, healthy amount of reverb, and uh, just to kind of let that decay more. And I've also got the, the pre-delay turned up quite a bit because I wanted to kind of have that, um, that, that second thing come in, you know, the, the tone and the snare hits and then the pre-delay comes in just a little bit afterwards and I tried to put that in time. Um, okay, so that's the snare. Now I'll move on to the, the kick. Um, the kick I didn't do a tremendous amount, amount to. I wanted to do something that was a little bit different than kind of the standard electronic kick. So it's it's really really scooped and uh, without a subwoofer it actually um, actually probably goofed it up a little bit. It doesn't it doesn't translate too well but with a sub um, it's pretty uh, it's pretty dominating sounding. Um, so let's hear that with Rhino. Okay, so this is just kind of uh, like a, a standard thing I do with Rhino. I've got the frequency at 46 hertz. Um, I actually didn't play around too much with the sustain and the decay. Well, maybe I did, actually. I've got the sustain down all the way. Um, but uh, this is a little trick that I picked up from Brandon's video that's really cool, is that I started the dive frequency at about 129, so you get um, kind of that chest attack, and then it goes down to 46 hertz, as opposed to keeping the dive off and uh, just having that. Now with the dive. So that is a really, really handy trick right there. Now the hi-hat, move on to that. Um, let's see, I'll take the delay off and rhino off. This is what I have with the hi-hat. 
Okay, just a boring, stupid hi-hat. And then with Rhino... Okay, so with Rhino, I've actually got the, the oomph frequency up quite a bit. Um, it's about 1K. I think I left the yeah I left the sustain and the decay right where they are. The dive I actually put the dive up really high, uh, or not really high, but you know it's a 4K, um, a lot higher than you would put it on a kick drum for sure. Um, and then I messed around with the, the speed just a little bit, and I've also got some some harmonics in there. And let me make sure I don't think. Um, okay, yeah I did. I automated this uh the oom frequency too you can get some really crazy stuff whenever it's whenever it's transitioning between pitches you can get some really really wild sounds all right so let's listen to it uh right when it starts to change pitch so that's pretty cool but it was really really dry and i wanted to create some space so i just threw this threw this delay on and I don't know, it's just some random preset in Studio One. This is a really cool delay, by the way, but uh, this is what it sounds like with the delay. All right, so I don't know, that's really cool to me. That sounds like a flock of birds like flying around my head or something. Really, really weird. Um, it definitely does not sound like a hi-hat anymore, and I'm, I'm really into that. Okay, now the moment you guys have all been waiting for, I'm going to go ahead and bring in my synth that, uh, that sounds like a fart. It's really awesome. Uh, so here's that. Okay, now um, in this particular instance, I'm using Rhino, but uh, I'm actually using Rhino just to, to make the fart sound a little bit more juicy. Uh, <laughs> okay, so uh, Mojito is actually pulling uh, a lot of that weight there. I was just uh, flipping through presets when I was making this, just kind of thinking, oh, I'll put a little synth thing on there so it's not just drums. And uh, I found this preset, and it just sounds like somebody just ripping one. Okay, so up until that point, I was like halfway serious about <laughs> this piece of noise, and then uh, I found that, and I just I just knew. It was like a light bulb went off, and I, I had to put it in there. But on its own... Okay, so, you know, that sounds okay for a fart, but uh, when you put Rhino on top of it, you get that pitch in there, and I put the click on... And the, uh, the click, I've got it set over here to this upper left-hand corner, which is kind of the, uh, I don't know, I, I w wouldn't really call it like brittle, but it's kind of a, a papery sort of thing. All right, so that completes it. That makes it sound, uh, makes it sound a little bit more uh, of, a, of a wet kind of fart, so... <laughs> I don't know where you'd use this, but I'm just showing you the possibilities here. Okay, so everything together sounds like this. 